uh, thank you for joining. You know, it's a, a little bit of a, a shorter, slightly shorter uh, week. Uh, so I do appreciate you all joining. I know a lot, a lot of people are on holiday or are doing other things. So this is, uh, this is great to have you guys here with us. So bear with me for one moment, guys. Let me bring up my disclaimer and then I'll get you on the desktop and we'll get going. From there. Good morning, Ray. You've been on a, a loyal follower. Um, so I do appreciate you joining. Okay, guys, you should be able to see my disclaimer now. Um, we will get going uh, by starting with this presentation is provided solely as a courtesy to aid the education of our customers and prospective customers. It will discuss risk management concepts, strategies, and does not include the recommendation or endorsement of any particular security chart pattern or investment strategy by Forex.com. Uh, this presentation has been prepared without regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, and needs of any particular recipient, and we don't guarantee or verify the accuracy of the information or commentary provided. Futures, optional futures, foreign exchange and other leveraged products, they involve substantial risk of loss and are not suitable for all investors. Spot gold and silver contracts are not subject to regulation under the US Commodities Exchange Act. Contracts with difference or CFDs are not available for US residents. Okay, guys, um, let's uh, get going. I'll bring up my charts. Uh, I've got a few other charts to, uh, to entice you with today as well, guys. Uh, these, by the way, the ones with the white background are my forex.com charts. Um, so let's start with the pound first, because obviously this morning, big data, obviously, uh, was, um, uh, I don't know if you still hear that big sound, can someone let me know, but you can hear me well enough, that's going to be, have to be as good as it gets, I think, today, um, if there is a big sound with that in the background, I don't think it's more than usual, sorry guys, um, let's get going, so, uh, in the pound today, you'll actually see it clearer. Just, oh, sorry, just to remind you all, this is, these are my forex.com charts. They represent prices offered by forex.com. These are my Bloomberg charts. So these are Bloomberg prices, obviously not forex.com prices, just uh, to let you guys know. Let's get down to kind of the nitty gritty of what's gone on today. Um, an unusual price pattern, maybe someone might uh, expect uh, or not have expected. Um, this is uh, cable, and it's uh, cable from, from right at the beginning of the trading session. And as you can see, uh, we kind of dawdled, uh, fell into that CPI into that CPI release at 9.30. And then as you can see, the markets went a bit wild. Inflation fat did fall back as expected to 1.6%. Uh, that's the lowest level since 2009. Um, but it caused, but yet yeah, here we are again at the highs of the day. Not off, not what often happens actually during a CPI release. And let me just show you what I mean. Um, uh, bear with me, guys. I know it's a bit noisy, but I, I do think this chart is um, is really worth uh, what really worth holding on for. Um, right. Um, this. Let's put this. Let me put this in here. This is a great function that's on Bloomberg for those of you. I know some of you don't have Bloomberg, um, but you don't need it because we have it. But this basically is is just uh, uh, the, the security here is, is year on year inflation. And then it's, uh, it's we're looking at the reaction inflation has on the pound 30 minutes after uh, after the release. So, uh, you know, we've got the release, what, of an hour and a half ago. So this is the, you know, in 30 minutes from 9.30 to 10, how the market reacted. And this is really significant. So I want you to concentrate on this one that I'm hovering. Um, I'm hovering my, uh, my, uh, my cursor over. That says that we rose by 0.3%. Uh, in the 30 minutes after the release. So from 9.30 to 10, we actually rose uh, 30, over uh, 32%, even though, infl oh, sorry, 0.32%, even though inflation actually fell to its lowest level in 2009. Why is that weird? Because it's the largest increase post an inflation release in the last 12 months. As you can see, uh, for, um, for, for most of those releases, so for, for nine out of the 12, uh, we've actually seen declines. Um, not massive declines, but obviously that's just in 30 minutes. Uh, but this is an anomaly. So we've seen a, a much larger than expected. Um, in fact, if I can put that up here, it will actually show you the, the as you can see here, it's, uh, you know, um, plus or minus, it's, it's actually above. Um, you know, the, the, the regular responses, but it's, it's well above the average here. Um, in fact, it's about, it's coming up towards one standard deviation, or it's actually you know, not coming up to, it's about 0.3% above um, the standard deviation, uh, or uh, uh, 0.3 uh, standard deviations above where it normally is um, on a, um, on, on, you know, 
a regular on, on a, a CPI release. Um, so this is unusual. Um, this is, uh, is is certainly worth watching. One of the reasons why we've seen this whipsaw action in this entire is because tomorrow, obviously, the key thing is looking is going to be for. Um, the wage data. Now, this is a chart that I've put, just put together. I'll bring it down here. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Oh, you might not be able to. Sorry, guys. Let me just. Where did that go to? All right. Um, sorry, guys. Something's lost from my charts. Anyway, I'll show you here because it's, it's from here, basically. Um, yeah, as you can see here, um, this is this chart shows uh, the white line is inflation, UK inflation, annual inflation, the yellow line. Uh, at the bottom here is wage growth. So as you can see, there's been a big, for most of this goes, this chart, by the way, goes all the way back to 2009. So it's a five-year chart. Um, as you can see, for most of the last five years, there's been big disparities with inflation outpacing wage growth. Now that changed in 2009. And look at this. This spread, which this chart shows, is basically uh, one against the other, um, is narrowing dramatically. And tomorrow we may see uh, wage growth actually outpace inflation growth with wage growth expected to come in at 1.8% for March. That's above the 1.6% inflation rate. So not by much, but it's a historical, um, you know, a, a multi-year. This hasn't ha happened in four years. Uh, the last time it happened, as I said, was 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 uh, actually the end of it was it was actually March 2010. Uh, so four years is it's quite a long time for that to happen. And that that is one of the reasons why, um, or that may go to explain this kind of push higher in the pound on the back of. Um, this uh, on the back of uh, this inflation data is that this is only telling part of the story. The other part of the story, of course, being um, that wage inflation could start to rise and could start to rise quite closely. So, you know, where could we go next in this? Well, 168.23, here's the highs. The highs that we saw on the 10th of April, so from last week. They also, if we just get a slightly longer term chart, they correspond to those February highs there. That's obviously the, the, the key resistance level that we're watching. And then on the downside, well, let me bring back my other chart because those of you I know who join me a lot will know, they'll recognize this trusty Ichimoku. The top of the cloud is now key support uh, at the top, which comes in at 166.14. And then below there, we're looking at around about 165.56, which was actually the low from the 4th of April. So if I get a uh, so Thursday chart up here, it's actually this low here for the 4th. Of April. Um, but if we were to if we were to get below that cloud, that would be a very bearish development. That comes in at one sixty six fifteen, um, and then we have uh, one sixty six fifty six, uh, which is the low from fourth of April, um, as another key support level in the short term. I think the bigger risk as we lead up to this way, as we lead up to this data, is actually is actually that we um, we. Uh, <laughs> Or well, the biggest risk as we lead up to this is actually um, that we see um, maybe wage data um, come in weaker than expected. Maybe it comes in, you know, certainly if it came in below inflation, if it came in below 1.6%, that would be a big disappointment for the market. And we could see a big sharp turnaround in the table. Um, so what else are we looking at? Well, we're also looking at euro right now. A lot of people have been talking about euro, about how it is... Um, you want to see it like this? about how it um how uh, the euro is, is potentially at risk of being spoken being talked down uh by the uh by the uh the ecb so we've had a lot of ecb members come and go um let me just get rid of this chart and i'll bring up um, as you can see here it's uh it's literally uh you know been declining since reaching that high of 139 um, it's continued. It's been quite a sharp decline, really, over the last uh, you know couple of sessions. Well, really since Friday, since it peaked on Friday, just above one thirty nine at one thirty nine oh six on the eleventh, and now we're right the way down. Uh, we're managing to cling back to that one thirty eight handle, um, and really over the last kind of four or five, over the last kind of six, seven, eight sessions, um, we're kind of in the, around about the midpoint. So the low here is actually 136.73. That's from the 4th of April. So on the 4th of April, the dollar actually made a bit of a comeback, hence why we saw that dip in the pound as well. Um, so we've still got a bit of a way on the downside, but we're holding on for dear life almost, it feels like, to that 138 level. And that's largely because we are seeing... Um, that's largely because we have seen... Um, we have seen um, some... Uh, Better than expected data, the ZDW. Um, the current expectations were stronger, even though we did get some weaker uh, forward-looking expectations. 
added to that, the market may start to think that the ECB's bark is not as bad as its bite. Um, now, for those of you who have joined me for a long time, and I know a lot of you have, um, you will know that I, um, I'll often talk about, um, about how you know, the FX market and the stock market, they tend to be moved by a lot of global factors. So the euro, for example, maybe it hasn't fallen below 138, um, and maybe it moved slightly. It did spend a long time moving sideways yesterday, remember, even though it did back off to those highs above 138.50. Uh, but maybe it hasn't fallen right off a cliff, even in the back of all those ECB comments, because uh, the market is a bit concerned about what's going on in Ukraine and that's leading to some safe home flows, etc. The other thing um, that is worth noting, of course, that data hasn't been that bad, but also, you know, as we said before, it's the bond market really where you need to see the reaction to this ECB rhetoric. What is the bond market telling us? Well, let's take a look at some German yields. Um, I'm going to take a look at the short term yield to really uh, try and try and show you what that means. As you can see, yes, yields have come off, but they haven't. They still they're still in a bit of an upward trend. Um, let me just. A bit of a line. I mean, they still are in a bit of an uptrend. I mean, they're at a very level, of course, they're only at four, uh, 14 basis points. Um, but it's not as low as it was um, here uh, at the end of March, 28th of March. If you get down to, uh, to 13.6 basis points, or uh, 0.136. That is when we um, we could potentially see um, you know a bit, a bit more concern um, that maybe what the ECB doing right, what the ECB um, is going to do is, is kind of dramatically loosen policy. Um, for us, the ECB's bark is is worse than its bite. It obviously, has never implemented anything that dramatic on a policy front, apart from cutting interest rates every so often. Um, but there is a real expectation that it could do QE or maybe even you know negative interest rates. Obviously, QE is more radical than negative interest. Rates rates and um, we actually think QE is still some way off from the eurozone but it will all be dependent on what comes out of um, of this um, the, the April um, inflation report the ECB even mentioned that the April inflation report is um, expected to the April inflation report is actually expected to uh, come in and um, is, is going to be absolutely critical inflation at the moment is 0.5 percent and if we get weaker than that then that could be what um, takes us, what really takes us down to, um, that could be what kind of, you know, triggers and maybe negative interest rates, maybe even the potential first steps of QE. The other thing um, to point out is that we've got, um, the other thing to point out is obviously that we've also got, um, uh, we've also got some, um, We've also, uh, obviously, you know, if we've got Easter, if inflation can pick up, then that can potentially mean that the, the uh, ECB doesn't have to do anything. And we've been in this position before whereby the, the ECB will say that they won't do anything um, radical until they see the data and then data moves in their way, in their, in their, on their side. So don't think the QE is, is, is cut and dry at the moment, because it may not be. So this, as you can see, the market is, you know, it's not really, you know, it's, it's certainly taking account of what's going, what's coming out of the ECB right now, but it's not necessarily pushing it back down to those lows in February or even to the lows that we saw at the end of March. Um, hence why Euro has managed just about hold on to that 138 handle, even though it does look quite, um, it, it looks precarious, to say the least, for sure. Um, it's a bit negative, of course, that we never made it back to those 139.97 levels from March. Instead, we, we only could get as high as kind of 139.14 earlier or at the end of last week, and then we failed again. So we weren't able to make a higher high, um, and that is uh, that, that's quite a bearish um, development there. Uh, 50-day moving average, which comes in at 137.69, is your near-term uh, support level. And then below there, you get your 137.11, which is a 100-day moving average. Um, and the corresponds with the corresponds there, or is that, that 20 pips above um, the lows that we saw for the April. So that's certainly uh, something to worth watching there. So, Han, you're, you've just asked a question. Do you think Draghi will cut rates? They, I mean, they do have room to cut interest rates um, before they have to go negative with the deposit rates, but there's no point in cutting interest rates, really, because um, interest rates are so low anyway, um, and it's not really going to have a big impact on the pound. That would be, on, on the euro, sorry, that would be considered probably the least radical option they could take. What's far more radical is if they, um, or what would be far more radical uh, would be if they, um, would be if they actually cut it to negative 
So deposit rates into negative. And by the way, the deposit rates are just uh, funds that the bank leaves at the central bank. Um, if they cut them to negative, then why would the bank even leave them there? Because they have to pay to leave them there. So they may as well just lend it all out. Um, so that flood the flood the economy with euro and such, um, and that should have a dampening impact. And negative interest rates do tend to limit currency strength, but not always in the way that you imagine. Um, particularly if you're, you're if the euro current, particularly with the, with the euro, because the euro is such an unusual currency, it's used by a number of nations um, and, it's, uh, and, it, and it can react in very, very strange ways. So um, it's, it would be a bit of a risk. I thought that the most interesting comment to come out of the ECB came out from Benoit, Benoit uh, Gray yesterday from France. And he said that, you know, actually it's easier to implement buying private sector debt, but it's technically that it's easier to do that on a political basis. So the politicians of Europe are happier for, their, for the ECB to go buy private sector debt than they are sovereign debt. However, it's technically for the ECB much easier to buy sovereign debt than it is to buy um, to buy private sector debt. For example, how do you even value some private sector debt? How do you choose between I don't know a car loan or what you know a, a mortgage loan or you know what, how far do you go? It's very very complicated, and that. Um, uh, on that. Okay, so Again, suggest to me they're not going to really, really do much. But Pan, I believe that if they were to um, just cut basic interest rates down 0.25% or even down to zero, I think that would be the least, uh, that's the most kind of a mainstream action they can take. And I think that would be the least, least radical. And that would probably not have too much of a dampening effect on the euro. So they need to do something more radical, probably start with negative interest rates. If that doesn't work, then think about QE. But, you know, it's a complicated situation for the ECB. It's not as easy as it is for the Fed, for the Bank of England, for the Bank of Japan. It's very, very complicated, and that's set um, to watch out for. Now, um, let's take a quick look at the Aussie, because obviously overnight we had the RBA minutes, and as we had expected, um, and I think I believe one of my colleagues, uh, Chris Teddy, wrote about this, and um, he was like, yeah, they're going to try and talk down the currency. And indeed, they did. And they did try and talk down the currency. And we have seen a sharp reaction lower. Uh, when you think about it, we're down. Uh, we had been as high as 94.45. Down we're down 100 basis points now, the low being 93. Um, Sorry, we had been as high as 94.25, uh, and we've fallen, we've lost that 94 handle, so the low's been uh, 93.80. Um, let's take a quick look at a like, longer term chart just to show you where that is. We're basically flatlining, it's not it's not overly negative, but if you get to get below 93.5, that would be quite sh quite negative in the short term. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, we're still looking fairly strong. What could be more important for the Aussie um, in the next, uh, certainly in the next 24 hours, could be um, what happens to Chinese GDP data. So Chinese GDP is set to come at 7.3%. It's released at 3 a.m. London time tomorrow morning. Um, and if we, um, what we could see there is, um, is potentially a weaker than expected reading uh, or, or the, you know, how the market will react to a weaker than expected reading. Some people are expecting it. Uh, 7.3%, maybe even down to 7.2 or 7.1. That would be the lowest level in a long time, but it would also be lower than 7.5% target rate um, that the Chinese authorities have put for inflation for uh, GDP this year. So again, you know, what we're what we're trying to, um, you know, point out to you, well, well, one thing that's worth pointing out from here is that, you know, the Aussie dollar has been able to struggle a lot of weak, weak Chinese data. Will it be able to struggle with GDP data? I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to see, see about that. Um, also, if the momentum is a bit lower, uh, we have seen a bit of a reluctance to get above 95. That's the key thing here. Interesting enough, though, would be, you know, a lot of the market is now expecting some weaker um, inflation inflation a weaker GDP data out of China. So the bigger risk here would be that it's maybe not as weak as expected. And actually, it comes in at maybe 7.5%, beating expectations by 0.2%. Um, if that happens, then that could be um, then that could be what triggers um, some Aussie strength. Maybe then that's above that 95, uh, the figure level. So, uh, so certainly Aussie, we said we're in a bit of a holding pattern. We're consolidating. We haven't made any, you know, even though we've fallen today, we haven't made it any kind of, you know, big bearish moves. We're still in that uptrend. And I think that's kind of the, the thing worth pointing out there. A lot of people, uh, in fact, some of my colleagues have been putting out pieces uh, about Aussie Kiwi saying that it looks good. Is above its 100-day moving average now, which is key support. That comes in at 107.86. Um, you know, where can we go next? We've well, got to look at these Fed pies, which come in around about 
one at 10950. Um, they're the kind of the next uh, level to target. So again, uh, you know, the Aussie does seem to be um, outpacing the Kiwi now after months and months of declines. Um, it feels like we've turned a corner getting above that 50 day, getting above that 100 day moving average. And if we continue in the way that we're going, then, you know, as I said, those February highs are back on the cards, maybe even back to 110. But it could, in the very near term anyway, be dependent on China data. Um, okay, does anyone else have any questions? Um, I am aware that I've witted on quite a bit. Oh, I'll just quickly go through uh, go through a dollar yen with you. I don't know if you guys ever read or get um, FX Week. Uh, we actually won the uh, we were the, the closest predictors for dollar yen on a three month basis. We won that um, yet again. So we're beating some much more over much. Uh, so we uh, our forecasts are beating investment banks um, and who have, have a lot more resources than us. Um, which is good news. Um, so, so we did well there. But uh, dollar yen was one of our was our winning three month forecast. And as you can see, we're in a consolidation pattern, but we're looking very weak. We are managing to hold though above this one hundred one twenty. This uh, kind of uh, this one hundred one twenty level. Sorry, which had been the low from March. We're managing to hold above there. If we get below there, then you know one at one hundred eighty, which is the two hundred day moving average. The yellow line in this chart really comes into play. Uh, for now, anyway, you know, we're, we're just looking really weak. We're in a holding, we're consolidating. Maybe the market is waiting. There's some key uh, US data out this week. We also have some uh, speeches from some Federal Reserve members, including Janet Yellen. They're going to be absolutely critical because it seems like, you know, someone said to me today, I was, I was talking um, to a journalist and they said, you know, why is it, you know, what is it that, that what's wrong with the dollar? You know, a lot of the reason why a lot of these crosses uh, or these pairs are doing well, for example, dollar yen, isn't necessarily because of Japanese yen strength. It's actually because of the dollar weakness. Um, that's kind of the, you know, they've been the key thing to point out. Um, and, I, you know, and I, I was kind of saying that she was like, you know, well, what would cause, what could potentially cause it to rally? And I, I actually think, you know, the, the dollar has rallied, but it's largely rallied in the lead up to an NFP report or in the lead up to an FNC meeting. So Yellen's speeches this week, will be absolutely critical for this pair whether or not we can get back to the, these highs from the beginning of this month when we the when was it the, the, the 4th of april when we had that uh the non-farm payroll report um, if we can get back above to that 104 20 level we'll be very dependent on um, on on yellen and we're so far away from it now we've got to get over the 50 day and 100 day moving average hurdles you know that, that they come in at 102.35 102.96 respectively and um, that's kind of the you know the key thing uh, to point out there. Um, so as you can see looking week uh does look fairly well supported above 101.20 then 101.80 um, but pretty much uh, just trading sideways. Um, does anyone have any questions? I've got another couple of minutes. Very happy to take a couple of questions. Any thoughts on silver and gold? Uh, well, obviously, my colleague Fawad is the uh, the gold specialist. So do watch our. Uh, watch our website for that, but I will talk to you about gold. It's not been doing too much today. Um, interesting enough, do watch out. We see some weak US inflation, and that could be a bit of a deflationary impulse, um, which could see um, gold, uh, you know, maybe struggle a little bit. Maybe that's what we're seeing right now. Gold is weaker uh, on the day. It's backed away from that 50 day moving average, which comes in. Sorry, guys, let me just uh, expand this chart for you. As you can see, 50 day moving average, we're back through it. That, that was at 318. We had got to a high here around about kind of 13, 35 ish, but we totally backed away from there. Now we're looking at 100 day, 200 day moving average, sorry, at 1300 the figure um, to act as key support. So we're, we're getting quite close to that. But you know, what is weighing on, on, on gold? Well, number one, it's probably because the market seems to have gone about the Ukraine again. Um, so it's maybe a little bit of, you know, people taking out a little bit of those thoughts of, uh, of those kind of, you know, safe haven flows. Um, and it could also be, um, as a result of a potential deflation impulse. Now, I do have to say, at the beginning of 2012, um, someone I was asked whether or not I, you know, what my outlook for gold was. A lot of people were like gold is going to rally, and the reason why it's going to rally is because we've seen, um, you know, we've, we've seen a, uh, you know, a lot of um, we're we're, we're going to get this explosion of inflation. Well, we didn't get that, and okay, fine, uh, you know, it was a little bit ropey overall from kind of, you know. For the last, you know, about year and a quarter, we've actually seen uh, gold just sell on pretty much in a straight line. 
Um, right now, you know, we haven't got back above those uh, August uh, 2013, August 2013 highs. Do you remember that when gold rallied on the back of crisis in the AM world? Um, they came in around about 1440. We didn't even get to 1400 in the latest rally at the end of the end of, um, of March. And that I think is kind of, you know, maybe it's just it's just not as interesting. We do think though that uh, 1280 is acting as a fairly good support there, and will could potentially attract um, some short-term inflation. But right now, we'd recommend trading it in, in, the, in the short term. Um, okay, any of these uh, uh, phase uh, on dollar CAD? Yes, big day for CAD tomorrow. Obviously, uh, we get the um, Bank of Canada meeting. They're expected to remain. Uh, to not really do too much. Um, dollar CAD isn't actually the most interesting. Um, as you can see, we've kind of bounced off this support here. We're trying still desperately to get above 110. Um, whether or not the extent of that 110.57, that's your key, uh, key uh, resistance there now, 50 day moving average, pink line on the chart. And we're kind of trading between two moving averages. We've got the, uh, the, uh, the 109.23, which is the, the 100 day on there as well. Now, just looking at some key levels that we need to break above to maybe suggest that we could make another get, have another run higher in dollar CAD. Um, remember as well, governor, the Bank of Canada governor can sometimes err on the side of dovishness. And if he does that, that could really trigger a bit more rally in, the, in, the, in dollar CAD. Um, I did say at the beginning, obviously, that the dollar has been you know, really annoying at just its inability to rally. Well, it has been able to rally against the CAD because the CAD has been weakened in the dollar. Um, so as you can see here, we'd probably need to get above uh, 110.19 to start with, um, which is the 38.2% retracement of this uh, the down move in dollar CAD, uh, which uh, first started about the 20th of March and then ended uh, last week. Uh, we then obviously have, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the 50 day moving average comes in at 110.57. And then the 61.8% uh, uh, retracement of uh, the latest down move comes in at 111.20, just below 111.20, 111.18. Um, so that's another uh, key resistance level on the upside. If we get above the 61.8%, then that suggests that, yeah, maybe we could retrace those highs from the March. Maybe even head higher. I mean, a lot of people have been looking for 114 um, in that in you know in, in recent uh, months. So um, you know that could all be dependent on a couple of things. If the dollar can really gather some strength um, and continue to rally on a broad-based basis, and also if maybe in the short term, anyway, if Governor Pelosi, uh, Polos in uh, Canada manages to talk down um, the currency. Now, okay, guys, thank you all so much for joining. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, it's been great to uh, to have you uh, join. As always, I know you're very supportive of these, so we really do appreciate it, appreciate it here at forex.com. Please do continue to follow us on Twitter on forex.com. You can also see our website on the forex.com website. So uh, thank you all for joining, and uh, please do join us uh, next week for more. Bye-bye. Have a good Easter, everybody, if you are celebrating or taking time off.